and welcome to Senior Solutions, where we bring you topics affecting seniors and their families. I'm your host, Mindy Fellington. Have you ever wondered, gee, what should I be doing now or what can I do now that maybe I'm not quite 20 years old anymore? Exercise-wise, balance-wise, yoga. Well, I have, and I, my guest today is Mark Goldfarb, and he's going to share with us some tips information about what not to do, what to do, and we're actually going to do some exercises. And thank you very much for being here today. It's my pleasure. Tell me how long you've been a personal trainer. I've been a personal trainer, yoga instructor for, this will be my 16th year. And what did you do in your former life? In my former life, I, once upon a time, I had a landscape company. Sold that, traveled around the world for a couple of years, came back and became a stockbroker financial planner and then got out of that and into personal training. And what was it that um, got you into this wonderful field? I had an, a friend who I went into business with and she died and it was very painful and I actually she was murdered in the office. I came in and uh, she was shot in the head and her husband had shot her killed himself and he was lying on the floor next to her. And after looking at that, I didn't want to go into the office anymore. Yeah. And the only imagine. thing that kept me sane was exercising. So I said, hey, maybe I can earn a living doing this and it's the best thing I've done. A lot less stress and a lot more pleasure. It's always a win-win situation. I win, the client wins. It's really nice. That's great. And your, your focus is more of the senior market, and that would be what age range? <laughs> well, as, I've gotten, it's a, it's a as I've gotten older, my clients have gotten older with me. Some of my clients I've had for 16 years, mm -hmm. some, for the, some for only five years. But generally speaking, my clients are 55 and older. Um, What's the oldest? My oldest client is 90. She just turned 90. God bless. She lives at the Asbury Methodist mm -hmm and we do exercises there. That's great. Um, tell me about what things are special and or different about the types of training that you do. And I know we're going to take to some of the exercises later on in the show, um, but give, give, just kind of give our audience a, an overview of some of the things that are different that we ha you have to take into consideration when working with a different market. Okay, everybody has certain things, whether you're old or young, that you have trouble with. Maybe a bad shoulder, a bad elbow, you have tennis elbow or bad knees. So I will design exercises that do not exacerbate the problem. You can work around it. And that's mainly my job, is finding exercises that are helpful, not harmful. We can't do the same exercises as a 65-year-old that we did as a 45-year-old, generally speaking. Maybe some people can. I cannot. So the same is with my clients. We devise, we devise exercises that help them. Also, they have problems. As I was mentioning to you earlier, there are certain exercises you can do to help actually cure a hurt shoulder or a bad elbow. My yoga students tell me, Gee, I feel so much better. My arthritis doesn't hurt as much anymore. So, yeah, it, exercise is therapy, both mental and physical. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is step on, up on the BOSU with your left foot. Left, I had to think there for a minute. Left, and then lead with now right, and step back down with your left, and continue. Oops. And step up with your left, and try to keep the same pace as you go through so I'm kind of... That's right. Keep the same pace. If you can go faster, that's good. If, it, but maintain that pace. That's it. Now you're working. Oh. Now you're trucking. Okay, now try leading with your left foot. I, I was doing my left foot. Or lead with your right <laughs> foot. <laughs> so that kind of gets your mind going too, which is probably a good thing for all people of all ages. About left foot, right foot. Okay. And again, what you can do... I'm warmed you, up. Okay, you're warmed up. Now that you're warmed up, we can do some, we can do some exercises. Or let's, let's start with some really gentle stretching first. Okay, before we do that, so I've noticed my heart rate is 
up. That's good. Yes. That's a good thing. Should, do you recommend that people wear heart rate monitors? Yes and no. Uh, yes, after a while you'll get used to it. You can, tell what, uh, you can tell what your heart rate is. If you're not used to it, yeah, well, it's a good thing, especially if you're doing aerobics. I like to do my aerobic training with my senior clients or all my clients measuring their heart rate. There's a, your maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. And you want, so if you're 50, 60 years old, from 220 is 160, 80% of 160 is 80, 40, 128 beats per minute. So that's a good place to, you know, you can work out at 80% to 60%, so that's like between about 110 beats per minute to 128 beats per minute. And so what, how does that affect if I wanted to lose weight, for example? Oh, it really revs up your metabolism. It really gets things working. Is it better to have a higher heart rate? in that situation? Okay, it, it's not better to have a higher heart rate. What you want to do is work, see how long you can work out with that elevated heart rate. The more fit you are, the more your heart rate will, you'll be able to sustain that higher heart rate. Got it. Uh, some people can only get up to, you know, 75% of their maximum heart rate, then they need to rest. And as you get more fit, you can go higher and higher and higher and maintain it for a longer period of time. Okay, all right. Okay, so for some exercises, I like to do some balance exercises. Because mm -hmm. I guess that's something that's really important so what as I'd like people you to are do aging. Is stand up straight and get your feet right underneath your hips and shift all your weight to your left leg. Put your arms out for balance. Ooh. And now lift your right knee up and see if you can bring your arms up above your head and touch your fingers and hold that for one and two and three and usually for a minute but that's fine for our okay. purposes and try, try the other side because it's not the same right no each side is well, different well do I first bring my leg up and then bring my arms up mm -hmm. that's fine that's very good well, that's, that's really good balance that's, that's good to know because I didn't think I did have very good balance well that's very good okay another thing um, I like to do with my senior clients is to use exercise bands instead of free weights. Why is that? The free weights cause problems. Maybe you hurt your shoulder lifting a free weight. I don't I know. I don't remember how I hurt my shoulder, but, but I definitely... I, I see lots of people in the gym hurting themselves with the free weights. They're oh, very, actually, I remember how I did it. It was in a class with one of those bars, okay. and it was brought too far back. But these stretch... And they're just more forgiving than a weight. So let's try a bicep exercise. We'll start with blue for you. Hold these in your hands and step on it with two feet. Your palms are going to be forward. As you come up, oh. exhale. Okay, let's try a little bit easier. <laughs> no, I would, it's, it's challenging, but okay. I was, I, that as was you, a sound as effect. As you come up, bend your wrist towards your shoulder and then come down slowly. So come up fast, go down slowly. That's it. And what about breathing? Anything Exhale. special? Yes. Besides always, breathe. Always, <laughs> always. That's a good idea to be breathing, yes. <laughs> Exhale. Do you, do you do CPR? The, ex, yes, I do. I have okay. to, uh, we're certified okay. <laughs> to be uh, a trainer. You need to be CPR. Um, always exhale on the exertion phase of the exercise. In other words, when you're lifting the weight. And come down slowly. And that's a good thing to talk about. Most people will come up and just let their arms drop. Half the exer they're missing half the exercise. Come down slowly. And why is that, that it's important to come down slowly? What, what's the you're, benefit when of When you that? come down on the negative side of the exercise, you're much, your muscles are much stronger coming down. And if you come down slowly, you get a better muscle stimulus. Okay. Okay. Terrific. Okay, that was. I'm pretty... going to be buff. <laughs> You're pretty buff now. Well, it's all relative. So we can also do triceps. We can do kickbacks. I'm sure you've done kickbacks in the gym like this. Well, you can use a band, and I like bands better than. This is what you're going to do. You like it better than. Than the free weights. 
They just don't hurt you. Well, that's a good thing. Okay. I guess I need to... So you need to make it just a little bit tighter. You want to make it a little bit more difficult for me, huh? Just a little bit tighter. I said, lean forward, bend your front knee just a little bit, and... So this perfect. is for that, the thing that all women don't want to have, my grandmother's arms. That's how I got one of my first clients. She was getting, she was going to her daughter's wedding and wanted to wear a sleeveless dress. Yeah, well. And she wanted good triceps. Those days are gone. But <laughs> okay, that's very good. Try your other side just to see. Do you find that most people you're working with are stronger on one side than the other? Yes. That's one of the disadvantages to using machines. Most people use them uh, using both arms, both legs at the same time. I recommend if you're using machines, do one leg at a time, one arm at a time, just to see. Okay. All right, very good. That was biceps and triceps. Trice okay. No. So do, when you're working out with your, your senior clients, are you working like, what do they call reciprocal muscles? Is that, am I using the right uh, term? Well, push and pull. Um, generally speaking, when you're working out, you start with the bigger muscles in your body. Which are? Which are your buttocks, your hamstrings, and your quads. Not, big, not bigger in terms of? No, no. <laughs> the buttock is the largest muscle in the body. Okay. Okay. So if we were going to do our quadriceps, we could do squats. We could just come down like this. Try that. Mm -hmm. As you come down, raise your arms. As you come up, lower your arms. Ah. Just the opposite. Okay, now you got it. Okay. Now, when you're working with somebody who's a senior, are they doing it like this or are they doing it a different way? Let me show you what I would do with a senior. Have a seat okay. in your chair. And I would put the chair like this. Whoops. Thank you. Oh, that's... And I'm going to sit on this kneel on this chair just to, so it won't tip over. Okay. And so sit. And stand. And stand. Okay. Great. All right. Well, okay. that's good. What we're going to do is we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to Senior Solutions, where we bring you topics affecting seniors and their families. I'm your host, Mindy Fellenton, and I'm joined today by Mark Goldfarb, who is a personal trainer and yoga instructor, and he's here sharing some fantastic exercises for those of us who are not quite what they used to be. Mark, do you want to tell me about how to do this exercise, That's the yeah, floor this exercise? Is a, this is a great exercise using the gliding discs for your core muscles and your shoulders. And I have clients who are 75 who do, who do this. Okay. So, so what I'd like you to do is lift your knees off the ground and bring both knees towards your elbows and go back. Oh, go this, back and forth. Try that three times. This is tough. Okay. Now alternate your legs. That's easier. That's, that's the easiest one. And thirdly, take your legs all the way back and take your legs wide apart and come together. Whoops. And there we go. Very good. Okay, you can. Ah, oh, that's a okay. workout. And <laughs> to start off with, you might do five of each, working up to 30. Okay. And it's a very aerobic exercise because you're using all the muscles in your body, everything from your feet all the way up to your shoulders. Yeah, I feel my and heart rate. Your raises. heart will really get elevated. So to make things a little bit easier, let's do some core exercises that are not quite so aerobic. So let's lie on our sides. That's it. Elbow right underneath your shoulder. Okay. And, and is it imp why is that important that it's right you're under? Gonna, you're going to be supporting yourself. Okay. Okay. So this arm will go right onto your side. Now lift your hips up off the ground. 
and lift this arm up in the air. And there you go. That's a side plank. Really great for the muscles along the side of your body, your obliques. Okay. And try the other side just for kicks. All right. Just to see if there's a difference. Why don't you put your head on the other end? And is there any age where it's not good to do this? or? No. It depends on your level of fitness. I wouldn't start somebody out with this exercise. But since you do do exercises, it's okay. I would do it. I'd modify it. Instead of doing... What the, are some modifications for instead somebody? Instead of doing the, the exercise with your legs straight out, you do it like that. Now try it. And, oh, it and it's I much can, easier. Much easier. Much easier. And that's the main modification. And then... Lastly, the way to do it is with your arms straight. Is that easier? Or? That's much more difficult. Okay. Well, let's do the easier ones. Okay. That's much more. <laughs> okay. E easy, let's do e the easier. Easy can be good. All right. What's good on all fours? And what we're going to do is put our right arm out in front of us and our left leg behind us. And so that's almost a coordination hold. thing. That's called spinal balance. Really good for your core muscles. And is, the, and is coordination and balance part of the key ingredient for working with the seniors? Would always, you say? always. We do balance exercises. We do coordination exercises. I try the other side just for kicks and see. A little more difficult. So that's a message that your body is giving you. And the message is work with me more than the other side because you can see that you need it. And you can see what you're doing here is your wrist is like this, so your balance is much more difficult in the side. If your arm were straight and in line, you'd be much better balanced. Is there a modification for someone who isn't able to do the, this way, which I assume yeah, is Yeah, what we, what we do is just do your arm. Just do your leg. Okay. All right, that's good to know the modifications for people. All right, lie on your back. And we'll do some bridges. One, if, that's, that's it. So, and you just lift up as high as you can. Once you get up as high as you can, pull your shoulder blades underneath your shoulders. And, come. Now, and what is this helping with? This is good for your buttocks, your core muscles. You can feel it in here in your quadriceps. And what would be a, a change for somebody who may not be able to come up as high or maybe I need to come up higher? I have a client with camptochormia. Which is? It's a disease that comes along with Parkinson's. And he can barely get up. But that's fine if he can only get up a little bit. He's still working his muscles. Okay. So if, if somebody were to go this high, that, that's still good. Yeah. And the more, if they can do it a little bit, generally speaking, after they do it a little bit, they'll be able to do it more and more okay. as they get stronger. Am I buff yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So some exercises we can do for the buttocks would be this on all fours and you're going to take your knee forward and then lift up towards the ceiling. Okay. Try that and see if you all don't right. feel that in your and, hip. And in your can hip. you also show if there's a modification for that? Is there a modification for say what, yeah. for your person who's 90? If you have bad shoulders, if they're 90 we can do them on your elbows so there's not so much pressure on your shoulders just lifting like that mm -hmm. or you could use a chair and they could put their elbows on a on a chair and do it so they're standing right okay so that, that would be a modification lie on your side and we'll do some hip exercises and what are the areas that are here, most... I'll let you use my pillow. Put your head on the pillow. Oh, you're so good to me. Yes, I'm I. I like that. Okay. Thank you for my pillow. Okay. What are the areas that you would say most 
seniors need to focus on in their workouts? Definitely lower body. That's their mode of transportation. That's how they get around. Mm -hmm. So hips, buttocks, quadriceps, hamstrings, ankles, tibialis, the front of your leg. Mm -hmm. That's the most important. Lower body keeps you moving. Okay. All right, so what I'd like you to do is lift this leg up as high as you can. Come down slowly. Kind of like what we did with the biceps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up fast, down slow? Correct. And I'm sure you can feel that right in your hip flexor. Yep. Okay. All right, next, bring your knee towards your chin and kick out towards my hand. Like That's so? It. Yeah. And I'm sure you can feel that right in your buttock. I actually feel it in my waist. Okay, well, maybe, <laughs> I, should put, maybe I should put a weight on your ankle and you feel a little bit more. Oh, better. that's okay. <laughs> but but that, that's, so really, that's really good for your buttocks. Okay. And that, that's really a good one. All right. Um, another exercise I like to do for my seniors is with this. This looks like an interesting contraction. Now, when you're working out with your senior clients, are you doing that in a gym or in their homes, or do you go to people's homes? Mostly I go to people's homes. Mm -hmm. uh, some come to the gym, but I'd say 80% of my clients I train in their homes. Are there any classes that you are aware of or that you teach that are specifically for I seniors? Teach, I teach uh, senior yoga classes. Uh, I teach them at Grosvenor and in a client's home in Silver Spring, everybody's welcome to come. That's good to know. Well, as we get towards the end of the show, I definitely would like to have people get your contact information. Okay, great. Okay. And this is just a, a simple rec a wrist exercise. Ah. I've never seen anything like that. At first, first I thought it was going to be row, row, row your boat. And it's really effective. Most people don't bring your elbows down. That's it. Just use your wrists. Huh. Keep your hands close to your throat. I'm built differently than you, so that's more <laughs> difficult. But <laughs> yes, that minor detail. Okay, wow. Okay. That's and great. Because, try you it know, again. Try it one more time. I would imagine this is really important, too, for people who may be more prone to it's falling. It's really good for your grip. And falling. Yeah, for and the strength of your fingers. Because isn't falling something that is you know a big concern for people as they're aging yeah they're, so if you have the ability to brace yourself better i yeah i'm just thinking yeah thinking out good. loud okay okay one of my favorite core exercises is the plank oh. and the plank is killing me the plank is done like this so people can see better why don't you do it sideways sideways okay and this can have variations as well. For, let's do the 90-year-old version. Okay, the 90-year-old version. And then we can work our way up. Stay on your knees. And when you come down, you're going to keep your legs in line with your back. So there's not a break between it. My, my back is in line and my leg, yeah, just like that. Okay. So I'm sure you can feel that just a little bit in your tummy. Yeah? I do. Just a little bit. And I that's, do. That's... that's the easier variation. Okay. And, and then I guess now, we could go to the... Now that. lift your knees off the ground and we'll go to the more difficult variation. Oh, that okay. is... Okay. And even to make it more difficult, lift your right leg straight up in the air. Oh, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo! Come, come on down. Uh -huh. Now to make it really tough, take your left leg out towards the, out towards the TV. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me. Oh, uh, isn't that tough? That's a really tough one. All right, come on back. I thought you were going to tell me put both right. legs in the okay, air at the same time. I'll pay five. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are exercises that really strengthen our core, which are really good. Um, some other exercises we can do on the floor. I, I meant to ask you, before you start working with your clients, what are some of the things that you do to determine their level of fitness and well, ability? Well, as as first I ask them, do they have any particular problem areas? 
I like to know what kind of medication they're taking. Um, do they have a history of bad shoulders, bad hips, whatever it might be. And once I put them through a very simple exercise, I can immediately gauge their fitness level and adjust it accordingly. For example, let's try some push-ups. Everybody see that big smile on my face. So what, ah. we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do the old folks push-up first. Or Yay! What I call girly push-ups. Okay. And we're going to do them like this. Again, the same way that you had your back in line with your legs like this, just come down and try to touch your chin to the block. Let's see if, you can, right. see if we can do that. That's perfect form. Okay. Chin, can you make the chin touch the block? Excellent. Very good. Okay. I passed that test. Okay. Now let's make it a little more difficult. Oh, thank you. A little bit lower. Who okay. knew okay, that's having senior solutions okay. would be... <laughs> that's very good. Well, we're actually at a point where I think I'm done. Okay. But I want Let me see. Yeah, you feel good. Yeah, strong like bull. Mark, what I would like to um, have you tell our audience is where they can get in touch with you, how they can get in touch with you to be able to participate in your classes and get some personal training if they're interested. Great. My, my number is 301-509-0478. Or they can reach me at my email address, pt. P like Paul, T like Tom, M-A-R-K-G at msn.com. If you have any ideas for a topic or if you would like to get in touch with me, you can contact me at seniorsolutionstv at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. <music>